Hello everyone, welcome back to X4 Foundations version 7.0 where I continue the tutorials with the intermediate tutorials starting with the map which is fairly complicated so let's see what they have to say about it. Um, yes, let us continue. The basic tutorials uh, kicked me out to my existing save so there is a discontinuity there but hopefully the tutorials will go straight from one to the other. They keep with this quote. I, I remember there being a variety of quotes in the old X Games. Lots and lots of quotes. Open the map. Okay. It might be your most powerful tool, but it can be overwhelming at first. Oh, yes, it can. We'll cover the basics today. Let's begin with the icons. Open the highlighted menu. Uh. Open the. Oh, over there. <laughs> Legend. The legend shows you the meaning of the different things you see on the map. For example, this light green icon in the middle is your small fight. So ship. tiny. The green color indicates that it's owned by you. The slightly lighter hue means that you're personally there right now. And the big icon next to you is a station. A wolf, to be specific. Don't feel like you need to memorize this. You will always have access to it. Close this Lots menu of stuff. Now. Zoom out as far as you can. Zooming out. The hexagon That's as far as it goes. As you explore, you will find many more. You can also pan and rotate the view. I, so I'm using uh, W, A, S, and D, and Q, and E if to pan and rotate. Get lost, you can always return your camera to the uh, we can location. also rotate like this with the right Try click. It. On the highlighted button, that... Oh. Select an object. That's not my name. Okay. So we can go back to ourselves clicking that. Select an object icon to this click This selection up. is different from the target you select outside of the map. I have marked the wolf as your hut target so you can see the difference. Clear your selected object for now. As you can see, this does not affect your hut target. Can I see that? Now interact with your ship. Right click on my ship. Select information. Yep. Here you can see some general information as well as the ship's pilot, you in this case, and cargo storage. Take your time looking around, then open the highlighted menu at the top. Oh, that one. Here you can see more details about the pilot, as well as the rest of the crew. Expand the information for one of your service crew. Uh, we have service crew? Oh, wait, um, oh, down there. Now you can see a detailed overview of this person's skills. Sometimes individuals can have an aptitude outside of their current role and might be worth reassigning to a different Oops. role. You can assign roles and perform other advanced actions using the various tabs of this menu. We'll cover those actions in later lessons. Close this menu to move on. I already closed it, I think. Well, I don't know. I can't go back to it, so... Oh, I, maybe I should close that one. Open the object list. It lists all currently visible objects with some sorting and filtering options. By default, it shows you all ships and stations. Open the menu that shows deployables. It only lists a navigation beacon. Not the satellite that is also nearby. Why not the satellites? That's because the satellite is currently off oh. screen. Zoom out until the satellite's icon is visible. Okay, there it is. Now that the satellite's icon is visible, it is also listed in the menu. You can also select and interact with objects from the menu. Interact with the satellite and deactivate. We shouldn't deactivate it. It could be useful. Good. Open the property owned menu. This menu lists everything you own, even if the icons are not currently on screen. That is why you can see another ship here, but not in the object list. Focus the camera on the other ship. Okay, discover Vanguard. The camera will now follow your ship until you manually move it again. 
Zooming also keeps the camera focused on the ship now and not on the cursor position. Try it. To stop the camera from following the ship, simply pan in any direction. Do so now. Okay, panning. And those are the basics of using the map. If you want a refresher on what certain menus do, you can activate a help overlay with the highlighted button. Do so now. Oh, that is a tiny question mark. Each highlighted button can now show you what it does. Use the button again to turn it off. Take your time looking around. Close the map when you're done. All right, I guess that'll be okay for now. Okay, uh... It says continue game, so I should probably just go back to the start menu to continue to the next tutorial. Oh, that's a different quote. Kept seeing the Isaac Asimov quote. Today we'll cover another important topic, missions. As a reminder, the current objective of the active mission is always shown in the message ticker. Right now, the objective does not have a specific target. Let's change that. I've now set one of the ships in front of you as the mission target. The yellow markings let you know which one forward. it is. Please select the mission target. Good. I've now changed the mission target to a different ship. The yellow arrow near your crosshair points in its direction. It should be to the right of it. Turn your ship until you see the mission target in front of you. I'm probably ahead of the game here. Well done. Open the map. But it does adjust pretty well mission to targets are highlighted what I'm doing. In the same yellow on the map. And as you can see, there can be more than one at a time. Oh god. A lot more. No, too many. Targets don't always need to be objects either. Some missions give you a position or area in space like this. What the radius means really depends on the mission. Maybe you need to find something somewhere in there, or are required to cover the entire area with satellites. For now, I just need you to fly anywhere in that area. Well, travel mode, I guess. Alright. Open the map. Open the highlighted menu. Mission offers. This menu shows you any mission offers that you are aware of. Some are broadcast widely, most are more local. My joystick is controlling the map right Select now. Select one of the mission offers. You can now see its title, description, and objectives. The map also temporarily shows you guidance for the mission you've selected. Accept both missions. Okay. Good. You may have noticed that the mission area is no longer marked. That's because you can only see guidance for one mission at a time, and accepting a mission automatically activates it. This doesn't mean that inactive missions are paused. You can still progress and even complete them while they're inactive. And of course, you can choose which mission should be active at any given time. Open the highlighted menu. Here you can see all of your accepted missions. The active mission is shown in yellow. Select the inactive training mission and activate it. Set to active. Good. Now, abort both training missions. Okay, abort mission. Abort mission. Right clicking on them. No guidance now. This is because one mission ending does not automatically activate another mission. Activate the remaining mission yourself, please. Good. Now, please zoom out, find the station in the other sector, and interact with it. Select Start Guidance to Object. This isn't really a mission, but guidance is now temporarily switched to lead you to this station. Rather, it would do that if you knew the way. 
your computer doesn't have the necessary jump gate in its database. We haven't explored it yet. There's an exploration in game. In order to proceed, I'm marking the gate's location on the map. Look for a question mark. Close the map and fly to it. Okay. Um. Should, should I start guidance to that then? I guess so. Um. Okay, well, start guidance to that does not give me a little yellow arrow. But there's sort of a yellow line on the HUD. Is that the way I want to go? Uh, not on the HUD, I mean, on the map display down there, the radar. <laughs> well, there's a very obvious circle right there. <laughs> so, I guess it should be oriented like that, down there. And then that's forward. Okay. Yeah, the orientation of the little thing down there isn't exactly intuitive, the radar, if you will. Now that the gate is in range, the computer has automatically added it to the database and updated guidance to lead you through it. Follow guidance until you're at the destination. Well done. Unlike real missions, this one has automatically switched back to giving you guidance for the previously active mission. You can also get this kind of guidance by asking people for directions to certain locations or people. And that's it for this lesson. Okay, that one is done. Didn't have to go through the gate. And what's it doing? I think it's automatically going to spit me back into the menu, yeah. Sometimes it asks, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, inventory and crafting. Well, I Time said I would go in order, but... Want to fly wherever you want, whenever... Okay. Publius Ovid. It's Ovid. Ovid's metamorphosis. Today we'll learn about items you carry on Can your I person. just put I? Open the inventory menu. I guess shift I is how it is. Here you can see every item you're personally carrying around and their value. Inventory wares are sorted into several categories. Crafting wares can be made into something, usually either something useful or valuable. We'll do that later. Paint I hear things happen, happening in the shoes. background. You'll learn how to do that in another lesson. General wares are usually useful in some way. This seminar, for example, can be given to an employee to increase their management skills. <laughs> We're going to give management really skills to people. To you and can usually be sold off. You've probably noticed that some wares are shown in orange. These are illegal, at least somewhere. If you accidentally pick one up, you can drop them from here. Use the highlighted button to drop all illegal items now. Drop all illegal items. Do this for any other wear too. Please drop any amount of trade wear now. Drop item. Okay, we can just use the slide bar like that. Drop item. Good. We can change the lockbox Please type. at the nearby station for the next part. Well, more practice with the docking business would be good. Go to the trader's corner. You Trade. can walk there directly or take the transporter. Oh, we have to get out? I can't just trade from here? Okay. Ooh. That particularly doesn't... That looks like something from Wing Commander, I swear. Um, trader's corner. You look like a tree. Hello. But you're just a person. 
Okay, shouldn't there be guidance for me right at this point? I guess we'll have to use the exit, maybe? Okay, let's see. Trader's Corner, fine. You can find these on practically every station. Talk to the trader and choose Show Me Your Wares. Can I help? Hello. Super casual. Here you go. In addition to general crafting and trade wares, you could also buy spacesuit upgrades here. I got better thrusters as soon as I could afford them, and I haven't regretted it. Now I can't afford that. For now, buy the entire stock of Agnew steak and rare spices. Five and three, I guess. Eek. Okay. Close this menu to move on. Good luck out there. Now, interact with a nearby crafting bench. This is a crafting bench. You have enough to create a fine meal. Do so now. Fine meal. Agnew State, mixed fruit and rare spices. That does sound like a fine meal. It's worth significantly more than the sum of its ingredients. Go ahead and sell the fine meal to the trader. Now that's just silly. He should just walk over there and make fine meals. Can Maybe I he's not good Hello. at cooking. You should have a cooking skill to determine whether you can do that or not. Here People will probably hate me for suggesting that. Um, I mean, it's not right that you can just make a fine meal like that so easily. Well done. Presumably, the crafting benches aren't always so close to the traders. But... Good luck out there. Some crafted items have a specific use and may not be bought by traders. These include devices used to overcome security measures, as well as bombs you can deploy from your spacesuit. All of which are highly illegal, of course, so be careful. Okay, next. Spacesuit. Please get up and leave the ship in your spacesuit. What's the key for that? Control D. Quasar Vanguard. Use spacesuit. You've probably noticed that you keep moving in the same direction. That's because spacesuits don't have flight assistance and are limited to Newtonian flight. Any directional input, whether it's strafing, accelerating, or decelerating, will push you in that direction. I'll let you try it out for a little while. While you do that, limited to Newtonian your spacesuit flight. is equipped with a small hand laser. Please the rotation don't try to use it in fights with is stopped. Ships. You'd be pulverized immediately. You also have a repair tool. This tool works on most damaged objects, as long as they're not actually wrecked. This thing is beyond repair, though. Try to come to a stop using these inputs. Tricky, isn't it? Luckily, there's an easier way. Try it now. Uh, what was the easier way? Backspace? I mean, I'm, I'm pretty stopped. I'm not sure what tutorial guy meant. There's a green thing, that's just my ship. I mean, you know, from a space point of view, that's pretty much stopped right there. So I don't know what. Much better. Okay, I well, think you're ready for it was backspace, maneuvering. but it didn't take Please the backspace when I first did it. Using the indicated entry point. Anyway, probably won't need to worry too much about that. I have much EVA experience. Weak. There's an access hatch, Weak. but it's malfunctioning. Look for a broken control panel and it stopped me. I didn't expect it. Fix it. Um, repair panel. Uh, oh, it's over there. Uh, 
I feel like I'm setting it on fire. This is not the repair laser, apparently. Oh, there, uh, that's how I switch. Now, ah. fly into the corridor. I was using the boom boom laser, I guess. You may have noticed the okay. oxygen indicator, which is slowly going down. There's no need to worry about it. There's no need to worry about it. With plenty of time to spare. Out. There's another broken control panel. Repair this one as well. There's a lockbox here. What a lucky find. Please activate your weapon and carefully shoot off all the locks. Chip weapons also work, but you have to be much more careful with those. Lockboxes are fragile, and some even explode. Some even explode. Congratulations, you did it. Um, you may keep the items things for seem a little bit finished here. Shaky. Please leave the wreck and return to your ship now. Hold on. I want to attract it. Okay, I got it. Argnu soft toy, apparently. The spacesuit is also equipped with a booster. You can use it now is to reach it? your ship more quickly. Be careful though. It's easy to overshoot or crash into your target that way. Okay, boosting. To get back in, you need to make a docking request. Please do so now. Now, follow the green lights to the dock and fly inside. I don't know if it's a good idea to fall, uh, continue my save from 6.0 or not. Okay, apparently that's how I get into my ship. Quasar, Vanguard. Okay, that is the spacesuit tutorial. Relative movement. Tired of waiting for shuttles? I mean, I feel like I can handle you want, it, but you want. darn it, let's just go through all of them. There's a capital ship nearby. Please approach it. Get as close as possible to its surface. Well, uh, which surface? Alright, now come to a stop. You are now flying relative to the ship thanks to special flight assistance software. This works for most things that are bigger than medium-sized ships. No matter what the capital ship does, you will move along with it. Oh. This is especially useful for combat as well for docking or undocking. I've set up some targets on the ship's surface. Please destroy them. That's convenient. Try to use the ship's surfaces cover wherever possible. Your strafe thrusters are useful here. I can't even see where those are. I wonder what range it is to get the relative motion thing. Okay. Oh, oh, up. Oh, oh. Okay. You're just asking for it. Yes. Sneaking around the capital ship and knocking out its stuff. Oh no, I didn't You're get not it. not in actual danger, by the way. We're only simulating damage to your ship. Now, <laughs> fly away from the ship's surface until it leaves you behind. Well, still don't know exactly what range that's effective at, but... Good to know. Yes, I did not know that before. Most ships are able to carry and deploy certain small objects. Open the ship menu. Um, okay. Select the option to deploy a civilian object. 
Then select the satellite. Okay. The satellite has been successfully deployed. It's now sent against Gravidar data to you, so you'll be able to observe this space on the map remotely. You can also pick it back up. Select the satellite as your target. Interact with it and select the deactivate option. We have to deactivate first. Now simply fly your ship over it. It's back Convenient in the storage. To pick things up like that. Be deployed again. Navigation beacons are a cheap way of marking a location. Resource probes help with mining. We'll cover them in another lesson. I've unlocked military deployables. Deploy the mine. Okay. Deploy military mine. It will not arm before you're out of its trigger range, but you should still be careful around them. Move to a safe distance. Other types of mines can move to track targets. Moving mines Some are evil. Some can even distinguish friend from foe. This basic mine is static and just has a proximity trigger. Unlike other deployables, mines cannot be oh, deactivated. Oh, they can't be deactivated. Back up. All you can do is have them self-destruct. Interact with the mine and select the self-destruct option. Mine. There we go. That plume cell. <laughs> Small automated weapon platforms that can aim but not move around. Maybe they should Very skip the smoke part. To defend something stationary. Deploy one now. I mean, this space and all. Okay. Laser tower. Observe it attacking the hostile drone. There are large oh, 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 let me get out of the way. Let me get out of the way. Deployed from ships with S-sized docking bays. Okay, our laser tower got the little drone. So many things. Ship upgrades. Let's upgrade your ship. Open the highlighted menu. There's okay. a lot here, so let's go through it bit by bit. Yep, please. We'll start on the left hand side. The vertical bar of icons shows the different categories of upgrades you can get. The engine list is open by default. They generally come in three basic types. Combat engines have a powerful boost that doesn't drain shields too much, and a quick spooling travel drive with moderate speed. Travel engines have a much higher travel speed, but their boost drains shields way faster, making them less useful in a fight. All-round engines try to find a middle ground between these extremes. Select thrusters now. Okay, thrusters. These can also have variations, though usually only combat and all-round. The primary difference is that combat thrusters are calibrated to have a much stronger role, whereas all-round thrusters favor your. Huh. Select the all-round Mark I thruster. It's actually cheaper than the combat thruster. This will reduce the final bill. Select shield generators now. There's a shield Mark I installed here. Select one of the other models. Now, More look shields. At the stats shown in the bottom half. The shield capacity, as well as the recharge rate, went up. That's why they're shown in green now. You can't afford an upgrade right now, so go back to the basic one. <laughs> what you can afford is a second shield generator. Select the second slot at the top. Oh, that's like. Now, select the shield mark one. Okay. I did. Uh-oh, don't get stuck. Oh, maybe... Oh, there we go. Shield capacity and both of them checked. Right have doubled. Yes. Select weapons now. You're not allowed to buy most of these yet. 
That's because you need a special license for proper military equipment, which a faction gives you once you gain a rank. There's a different lesson that explains how that works. For now, simply select any of the weapons shown in white. The stats at the bottom have changed again. The two values are burst and sustained damage output. The difference between these two is that the former ignores heat, while the latter takes it into account. Unfortunately, these are a bit too expensive right now, so select the empty slot option again. Empty. In addition to hardware, you can also install software. Open the highlighted menu. Some of these are mandatory in almost all ships, like the Flight Assist software, for example. But there are always optional additions and upgrades that you can buy. The docking computer is quite popular, for example. What's the difference between Mark 1 and Mark 2? You can afford the basic one. What does it do? Select it. This ship has some light hull damage. Open the repair menu. Tell me what the docking computer does exactly. Select the item to repair your ship's hull. There we go. You can review all the changes you've made on the right-hand side. Additions are green, removals are red. Before confirming the order, you need to add your changes to the shopping list using the highlighted button. Finally, it's taking all my money. With the highlighted button in the bottom right. Typical. Your upgrades are now being installed. This will take a few minutes. While we wait, let's try buying a complete. Why did they have to make it take time? Open a lot of other things don't take time. First, you need to select the size of the ship you want to buy. This is a wharf, which sells small and medium-sized ships. For larger ships, you need to visit a shipyard. Select size M in the highlighted list. I better just do that again. Now select Mercury Vanguard in the list next to it. Um, that's covering some of these. Um... Okay, I can't see. I, I go. Okay, it's got the yellow highlight on the bottom one, so I assume that's Mercury Vanguard, but the message is actually blocking it. You can see that some of the icons on the left hand side are now red. That's because some upgrades are mandatory. Can't have a functional ship without an engine, can you? Select the Travel Mark 1 engine, as Didn't well as come the other with some stuff? upgrades. Basic scanner, trading software. Now, open the consumables menu. No, I've got. Uh, I I I'm a captain anyway. Consumables menu. Here you can buy or sell a wide variety of deployables. Their use is covered in a different lesson. This is also where you would buy missiles if you had a launcher installed. For now. Buy the maximum number of flares, which are used to defend against most types of guys. I suddenly have a million credits. Now open the crew menu. It's mandatory to hire a pilot when ordering a ship. Do so now. Yeah, I, I already... well, anyway. Um... I did it. I, I ordered one. Oh no, I did it too soon. Um, I, I clicked it already. Reset all changes. No, it won't let me reset the changes and I've done it already. It's stuck! I mean, that happens with tutorials a lot because I tend to accidentally do things too quickly. Okay, well, maybe I can go cancel order and then go through. It's not showing me the stuff. Okay, now I can click that. Service crew help operate and maintain. Oh, so it wanted most the flares? the maximum amount by dragging the slider all the way to the right. Higher service crew. I find it useful to save ship loadouts for future use. Do so using the highlighted button. Uh, okay, that one. Now, give the loadout a name and 
select save as new. Tutorial Vanguard. There we go. It has been saved and can be selected from the list whenever your outfit is. Well, that's convenient. This time. To order this one, first add it to the shopping list. You can change the amount for convenient mass ordering. 406,000 credits. I've given you enough credits to buy two of these, so set it to that amount now. Take note of the lower right corner. There is a warning now that some resources are missing. It wasn't shown when you ordered only one ship, so the station is able to begin construction of one ship right away. But it needs to wait for delivery of additional resources in order so to So sophisticated this economy. That's the main draw of this the game. missing resources yourself, something that the ship you're ordering will be perfectly suited for. How to do that will be covered in another lesson. Confirm the order to complete okay. this tutorial. Done that. Okay. Now we have to deliver supplies so that we can get our ships. Let's go into more detail about your weapons. Open the ship menu. We'll focus on the highlighted weapon configuration section. Okay. Each installed weapon has its own row. The squares in each row show you which weapon groups that weapon is part of. You can assign any weapon to any weapon group. Use the highlighted buttons to assign each weapon to its own group. There we you go. Also change the ammunition that's loaded into your missile launchers. Try it if you like. Close the menu to move on. Okay. That's uh that's complicated. You can quickly cycle through your configured weapon groups. Please activate each primary group at least once. Oh, uh, wait. Oh, that's primary. You can also I was going through secondary ammunition for any active missile launcher here. Try this now. Select the swarm missile. It takes a little time for the new missile type to be loaded into the launcher. Is that the swarm missile? The target okay. in front of you has strong shields. Your ion weapon is especially effective against shields. Switch to it and fire until the target's shields are down. Which one's Ion? Okay. That's not Ion. Wait. Well, it doesn't let me shoot that, so I guess this must be Ion, but it doesn't seem like Ion. Is it doing anything? I can't move forward. I can't turn either. Does the shoot active primary weapon? If I change my primary weapon, it says to cycle and doesn't let me shoot. So I must be that must be the right one. I'm used to the ion weapons being like a beam sort of, or a zapper. No, I guess I. Oh, I guess now I had to target to it. Plasma weapon and finish it off. Okay, plasma weapon is the top one. That's a circle. Okay, so the ions are the wavy line. Plasma is a circle. This target here is small and agile. Quite tricky to hit the plasma. Switch to the beach. Oh, uh, switch. down here you can arm and disarm them using the buttons on the right arm both turrets now they're set to defend which means they will fire at whoever attacks you let's go through the other modes 
Attack all enemies means that the turret will independently choose a suitable targeting range. Attack only capital ships, attack only fighters, and shoot only missiles work similarly, but only allow a subset of targets. Attack capital ships first, attack fighters first, and shoot missiles first, prioritize a subset of targets. Very sophisticated. Other targets are allowed. Attack by current enemy makes the turret fire at whatever you have selected, as long as it's hostile. Yes, please, Finding just the hostile the ones. Makes the turret fire at asteroids within range. Set the beam turret to only shoot missiles, and the plasma turret to attack capital ships first. Okay. Well, let's just go shoot only missiles, and that one to attack capital ships first. Good. Man, I don't want to attack capital ships first, though. That's dangerous. Just sit still and watch your turrets defend you. I'm sitting still. This could take a while, though. Incoming missile. This is the external view. Danger. Oh, um, I'm not too sure they're defending me that well. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I I'm gonna die like this. Danger. You are not in actual danger, by the way. Okay, but the, the, my turrets aren't doing a good job. Yeah, I, I don't think my turrets are doing a good enough job. I think I died. But the tutorial's complete. I think I better uh, conclude this video here, because otherwise it's getting too long. Uh, but clearly the tutorials are very good so Tired far. Waiting for shuttles? Want to fly wherever you want, whenever you want? Then okay, what okay. you need is a pilot's license. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, so yeah. Uh, I'll have to continue the tutorials in another video. For now, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.